Our country is on the road to becoming an automation nation, quite literally on the road. Our money issue cover story is from David Pogue of Yahoo Finance. Tony Hughes has been a long haul truck driver for more than 20 years. But today, all he has to do is sit back and relax. Okay, Rosebud is on. Woohoo! We're hauling 20,000 pounds of freight down the Florida Turnpike in a self driving robotic truck. It's been retrofitted with a self driving kit made by Starsky Robotics. Kartik Tiwari and Stefan Seltz Oxmacher founded the company in 2016. We think that sometime towards the end of the year, uh, we could be doing this run without a person behind the wheel. This year? Yeah. Self driving trucks this year? Yep. And if it's not his company, it might be Otto, whose truck made headlines last October by driving itself across Colorado to deliver a shipment of beer. Otto is owned by Uber, which has also been testing self-driving taxis in Pennsylvania and Arizona. But here's the thing. Once our trucks and taxis drive themselves, what will happen to the people who used to do those jobs? In the U.S., that's 180,000 taxi drivers, 600,000 Uber drivers, and three and a half million truck drivers. We really need to start to think very seriously about this. Martin Ford is the author of Rise of the Robots. This is it. He says driverless cars and trucks are just the beginning of a wave of automation that will threaten millions of jobs in every industry at once, like America's nearly five million store workers. Amazon is testing its first Amazon Go grocery store in Seattle. The company says shoppers there will soon be able to walk into the store, take what they want, and walk out again without ever encountering an employee. Sensors will detect what you take and bill you automatically. The cashiers are totally gone. You're going to end up with the equivalent of a Walmart with, you know, a handful of employees. You scale that out, and that's just extraordinarily disruptive. You name an occupation, and there's somebody considering a robot to take it over. Look how delicate. Perfect every time. At Zoom Pizza in Silicon Valley, four specialized robots help make the pizza. Eventually, the company plans to replace the remaining humans on the line, too. Here's Zoom's chief technology officer, Josh Goldberg. You would think there would be some Roman pizza chefs who'd say, no, this is not the way it's been done since our ancestors. Well, the world changes. You know, there's a lot of other things we don't do just the way our ancestors did either. The common wisdom is that robots primarily threaten repetitive blue-collar jobs. Not so, says Martin Ford. We're seeing dramatic advances in, in the area of computers, analyzing tumors, recognizing medical scans, mammograms, and being able to find disease. We're seeing, you know, algorithms move into areas like journalism, for example. You know, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Certainly not journalism. Oh, yeah. Ab absolutely <laughs> journalism. Um, by one account, every 30 seconds, there's a news story published on the web or maybe in a newspaper that's machine generated. Algorithms are even threatening the masters of the universe. Earlier this year, BlackRock, the world's largest money manager, announced that it's laying off dozens of human stock pickers and replacing them with robots. By 2025, across the financial industry, artificial intelligence is expected to replace 230,000 human workers. Bring on the disruption that is automation. Alicia Wiesel is the chief information officer at Goldman Sachs. The company now hires nearly as many computer engineers as financial workers. In the movie Wall Street, they would have been barking, buy, 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 into the phone. <laughs> yes, and now they're going, click, 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 tight, tight, tight. <laughs> See the famous Goldman Sachs trading floor? Well, a quarter of these people aren't traders. They're coders, writing software to automate the routine grunt work of employees all across the company. Someday, could software replace the functions of these folks? That's a great question. I don't think anybody knows the answer. All right, we get it. No job is safe. According to one recent study, 47% of American jobs could be lost to automation in the next 20 years. Martin Ford says it's time to start thinking about what we're going to live on in the post-robot economy. One of the best ideas out there 
is some kind of a universal basic income or a guaranteed minimum income. And this is where everybody gets, let's say, $10,000 a year just for being alive. Right. I think a better way to think of it is in terms of the idea that we've built this tremendously prosperous society. Everyone ought to have, if you're a citizen at least, some sort of ownership stake in this. But the purpose of having a job is not just to have income. It, it's also meaning and purpose and a place to go every day. That's right. That's going to be a real challenge, as yes, it is. But I think it's a challenge we can solve. Ah, uh, but wait. Most experts do agree that automation will soon take over millions of our jobs. But they don't all agree that that will mean mass unemployment. History has suggested that the, the pessimists have been wrong time and time again. Including MIT economist David Otter. You know, the last 200 years, we've had an incredible amount of automation. We have tractors that do the work that horses and people used to do on farms. So we don't dig ditches by hand anymore. We don't pound tools out of wrought iron. We don't do bookkeeping with books. <laughs> but this has not, in net, reduced the amount of employment. He also points out that the changes won't happen overnight. I'm sure 20 years from now, almost no one will be driving a vehicle. Young people are forward-looking, and they say, well, I guess I'm not going to have a driving career, so I'm not going to go there. Well, except that these young people might think, well, maybe I'll go into retail, but that's also going away. Well, maybe I'll be a chef, but that's also going away. Well, maybe I'll be a paralegal, but that's also going away. So let's do the following thought exercise. It's the year 1900, and 40% of all employment is in agriculture. Right? And so some twerpy economist from MIT teleports back in time to Farmer Pogue here and says, 100 years from now, only 2% of people will be working in agriculture. What do you think the other 38% of people are going to do? Well, I wouldn't know. We, we say, oh, search engine optimization, <laughs> you know, uh, health and wellness, software and mobile devices. Most of what we do barely existed 100 years ago. In other words, just because we can't predict what we'll be doing, doesn't mean we'll be doing nothing. And sure enough, despite having replaced so many stock traders with software, Alicia Wiesel says that Goldman Sachs still employs the same number of people and that their jobs have been enhanced by automation. And all of a sudden, that young person is engaging with the client on their actual problems rather than being stuck till 1 a.m. doing nothing but manning several different spreadsheets and trying to corral all this data together. You'll hear the same argument at Starsky Robotics. Its trucks will self-drive only on the highways. The company will still employ human drivers, but they'll sit in front of screens, driving the trucks by remote control once they're off the highway. And if Tony Hughes can keep his job without the weeks away. So on that aspect, it's going to make my life better. If you get hired to be one of the pilots, the remote control pilots, right? True. Well, well he's, uh, he's on the top of the list. <laughs> <laughs> so since this might be my last chance to be in a truck with a human driver, I had to ask. Will you? Yeah, I will. <laughs> yes! yes! I'd like to see a robot do that. 